the Jack Benny program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Right you are. Yes, sir. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. At 49, American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At the tobacco auctions they attend, independent tobacco experts auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means more real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, to those of you who haven't been warned, at the close of his radio season, Jack Benny is contemplating a concert tour. So let's go out to Jack's house where we find him taking his violin lesson. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. You better try the exercises once more. All right, Professor LeBlanc. Hello, come in. One and two and three and four and... Do not make it too legato. Grip your bow and play staccato. <laughs> Softly like a birdie chirping. You sound like a horse that's burping. <laughs> that's enough, Monsieur Benny. Now, try intermezzo again. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, 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 Monsieur Benny. Huh? Please, a violin is a delicate instrument. It has a heart. It has a soul. You have already broken its heart. Have pity on its soul. I see. You see, you see, you see. Please, Professor, control yourself. Would you like a glass of water? Yes. Put a little cyanide in it. Not till we finish the lesson. All right, all right. Take the exercises once more. Yes, sir. Play it softly, play it tender. Where can I go to surrender? (laughs) Make the notes a smoother mixture. This is worse than your last picture. (laughs) My poor head is getting woozy. Onesie, twosie, I hate you, (laughs) Z. All all right, Mr. Benny, all right. Now try intermezzo once more. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Professor. Mr. Benny, the violin has only four strings. Your left hand has only five fingers. How can just the nine of you make so many mistakes? (laughs) I'll try it again. Please, and this time, just follow these simple instructions. Relax, be calm, and slide the bow delicately over the strings. Is that all? (laughs) That's all. Now, commence. One, two... You see, it sounds better already. (laughs) They're fixing the three. (laughs) I'll try it again. No, no, no. Let's call it a day. The lesson she has done. Now, tut-tut, Professor, look at the clock. The lesson still has 14 seconds to go. 14 seconds. That's right. And then you will give me back my pants. (laughs) Yes, sir. Very well. Commence. The alarm clock, the hour, she is up. The lesson she is finished. I am liberated, free, free. Along the front, they love her, free. Professor! 
Control yourself! Control yourself! <laughs> Stop kissing me! <laughs> my goodness, these Frenchmen are so emotional. Oh, forgive me, Monsieur Benny. I forgot my city. Well, Professor, the lesson is over. You may go now. But, Monsieur, you have forgotten something. You, you haven't paid me. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, by the way, Professor, would you like some lunch? No, I want the money this time. <laughs> well, I'll have to get it for you. Excuse me a minute, will you please? Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Come on in. Well, thanks. <laughs> Don, what are you giggling about? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing? You didn't come over here. Don, what have you got behind your back? Mary Phil and Dennis. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, for heaven's sake. I know Don is big, but how the three of you can hide behind him is beyond me. I, I... beg your pardon, but would you mind waiting on me first? What? <laughs> I saw this line, so I got in it. <laughs> Look, miss... I'll have size nine, one pound, or where it won't show. <laughs> size nine, one pound, or where it won't show? Yeah. Nowadays, when you see a line, it's either for nylons, butter, or a vaccination. Oh, yeah, yeah, but this happens to be a private residence. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, as long as you're here, would you like some lunch? No, thank you. Hmm. Didn't even give me a chance to show her the menu. <laughs> Jack Benny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mary, what's wrong with serving lunch? Imagine putting stools around your swimming pool and calling it the Seaside Cafe. <laughs> so what? I serve good sandwiches and draft beer. That's right, Libby. Pickle in the middle and the beer on tap. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, Harris, that gag alone ought to get you a summer show. <laughs> Phil, that kind of stuff won't keep in the summer. <laughs> you kids can laugh if you want to, but I have the best beer in town. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Dennis? I'm going to deliver your keg of beer tomorrow. You are? Why? My mother sprained her back. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. How did it happen? Well, yesterday, when my mother was at work, my father waxed the floor in the kitchen. It was sure slick. Oh, you mean when your mother stepped in, her feet went out from under? I think so. We got our footprints on the ceiling. <laughs> Well, that's too bad. Did your father tape up her back? No, her mouth. You should have heard what she was calling him. <laughs> I don't blame her. Anyway, kids, what's going on? How come you all dropped in together? Well, we're going to the beach, Jack, and we thought you'd like to go with us. The beach? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, Jack, stop being afraid. What happened to you last year won't happen again. What happened, Livy? <laughs> well, Jack was lying on the sand, and two men came over and tried to bury him. Yeah. <laughs> tried to bury him? So what? They were only kidding. Not when they were playing organ music at the same time. <laughs> yeah, imagine those two undertakers coming down there looking for business. Well, it was your own fault for lying on the beach in a tuxedo. <laughs> no, that wasn't a tuxedo. That was my old bathing suit, and the lapels were a little shiny. Anyway, kids, you run out the beach. I got to stay home and practice my violin. Hey, Jackson, you're not serious about that concert tour next summer, are you? I certainly am, and no swing stuff for me. I'm going to play the classics. You know, that long-haired stuff. Long-haired stuff? Yeah. Wait a minute. You ain't got the talent or the toupee for it. I'll get along. Don't worry. Now, look, kids, I'm kind of busy today, so if you're going to the beach, go ahead. Okay, Jackson. Come on, kids. Let's go. Say, Jack, is our program all set for Sunday? All except Dennis' song. Just run over it once, will you, kid? Yes, sir. Michel Benny. Michel Benny. I am waiting. Oh, Professor LeBlanc, I forgot all about you. You want your money. I owe you for six lessons, don't I? No, five lessons. I thought it was six. No, no, five. I am not charging you for the time I hit you on the head with the violin. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that's right. Well, I'll get you the money as soon as I hear this song. Go ahead, Dennis, let's have it. Professor, put your pants on, please. <laughs>
on it. Very good. That'll be swell on the show. Can we go to the beach now, Mr. Benny? Yes, yes. Go ahead, all of you. So long, kids. So long. Bye, so long, Dad. Jackson. See you Say, Don, why don't you and Phil go in your car and Dennis and I will follow you. Okay. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Huh? Oh, Professor LeBlanc, uh, you're not going to the beach with us, are you? No, no, no. But before you leave, will you please go back in the house and remind Monsieur Benit to pay me for his violin lessons? Oh, well, it's probably just slipped his mind. I'll go in and speak to him. You, uh, you just wait here. Thank you. Oh, uh, while you're waiting, uh, here, uh, have a cigarette. Thank you. You'll enjoy that, Professor. It's a lucky strike. And you know, luckies are made of the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco. Please, Monsieur Wilson, go inside and speak to Monsieur Benit. <laughs> You know, Professor, the more you smoke luckies, the more you're convinced that those letters LSMFT really stand for lucky strike means fine tobacco. All I want is my money. <laughs> so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. I gave him six lessons, but I am only charging him for five. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, lucky strike. Five lessons at a dollar and a half. <laughs> And I'm not even charging him for the concerts I gave at his seaside cafe. Come on, Don, we're waiting. Okay, right with you. Oh, uh, Professor, you better go in the house and speak to Mr. Benny yourself. I have to leave now. Goodbye. Goodbye. All I can do is try again. <laughs> well, Professor LeBlanc, come on in. Gosh, how time flies. Seems only yesterday that I took my lesson. And... It was today, and I want my money. Oh, yes, yes, your money. I forgot all about it. How much was it again? For five lessons, seven fifty. But if you give it to me now, I'll take six dollars. No, 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 no. I'm going to settle it for the full amount. You are very kind. Now, let's see. I owe you seven fifty. Is that right? Oui, monsieur. Now, France owes us four billion <laughs> six hundred... And six million dollars. But I did not borrow that personally. This is not an international affair. Did I charge you for the Louisiana purchase? <laughs> what? All I want is to be paid for the violin lessons. You know. Da, 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 I know, I know, I know. Uh, just, uh... Uh, just sit here, Professor. I I'll go get the money. Good. I'll, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, put your pants on. <laughs> yeah, Professor's a nice fellow. A little excitable, but he's... More... Say, boss. Oh, what is it, Rochester? Are you staying in for dinner? Yes, yes, I think I'll eat uh, by the pool. You can't do that, boss. Why not? The elves are having a party out there tonight. <laughs> Oh, then I'd better have a bite now. What have we got in the icebox? Well, we got some cold borscht, cheese blintzes, sour cream, bagels, and matzo balls. Borscht, bagels, and matzo balls? Yeah, we had them left over from St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> good, good. Make up a big batch of hot biscuits with lots of butter. Well, we're all out of butter, boss. We are. We'll go over next door to the Ronald Coleman's and borrow some. But, boss, every time we're short of something, you send me to the Coleman's. Oh, we haven't borrowed so many things from the Coleman's. We haven't. When the time comes to return them, it'll be easier to switch houses. <laughs> Rochester, stop wasting time. Now, run next door and get some butter. Okay. Uh, I'll be in my room practicing my violin. I have to practice all afternoon for my concert. So call me when lunch is ready. Yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, Monsieur Rochester. Well, Professor LeBlanc. Yes, Rochester. Will you please do me a favor? Sure, sure. What is it? Will you please tell Monsieur Benny I am waiting for my money? Uh, how long have you been waiting? Since 12 o'clock. You're a beginner. I've been waiting since 1937. <laughs> anyway... You better speak to him yourself. I gotta go next door and borrow a pound of butter. And, uh, Professor. Yes. The lesson's over. Why don't you put your pants on? <laughs> oh, Benita, Benita. Yes, Ronnie. Uh, 
Uh, who was that you were talking to at the back door? It was Mr. Benny's butler, Manchester. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, what did Benny want this time? No, no, don't tell me. Let me guess. Was it the garden hose, a cup of sugar, or my tuxedo? <laughs> it wasn't your tuxedo. Mm, good. The last time he brought it back, the pockets were full of sand. <laughs> wanted to borrow a pound of butter. Butter? Butter? Well, what does he think this is? Shangri-La? <laughs> That's all the man ever does. Borrow, borrow, borrow. Oh, darling, don't be unfair. Once in a while he's loaned us things. Remember last week he let you have his lawn mower? Yes, but it wasn't much use to me. I could only mow half of our lawn. Only half? Yes, that's as far as the chain would reach. <laughs> Darling, <laughs> he means well. Oh, I know. And I really don't mind Benny too much. But sometimes he wants to borrow the oddest things. Last week he asked for some sympathy soothing. <laughs> sympathy soothing, sir? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, Benita, the sympathy is spelt backwards is your tapamis. Oh, yes. You did your tap miss. You did your tap miss. You did your tap miss. Drive your blues away. Oh, Ronnie. I mean, Mr. Benny's a pleasant enough chap. But with all his borrowing, I sometimes wish we weren't next door neighbors. Yes, it is annoying, but living next door to him has its compensations. Compensations? What do you mean? Well, he does serve the biggest glass of beer in town for a nickel. <laughs> I know, but that big electric sign flickering on and off, it keeps me awake at night. Yes, yes, and what a corny sign. Benny's Seaside Cafe, come in and drool by the pool. <laughs> Right under it, it says, put your stomach in our hands. <laughs> oh, my, my goodness, look what time it is. And I haven't started to work on that scene from If I Were King. You know, I'm doing it next week for that benefit performance. Well, I won't disturb you, darling. You stay here in the library and rehearse, and I'll go into the other room. All right. Now, let's see. Yes, I'd better start with this introductory poem. <clears throat> if I Were King, ah, love, if I Were King. What tributary nations would I bring to stoop before your scepter and to swear allegiance to your lips and eyes and hair? Beneath your feet, what treasures I would fling. The stars should be your pearls upon a string, the world a ruby for your finger ring. <laughs> and you should have the sun and moon to wear if I were king. Ah, let these wild dreams and wilder words take wing. Deep in the... Deep in the... Deep in... Oh, Benita! Benita! Yes, Ronnie! Would you please put the cat out? <laughs> Ronnie, I let her out about an hour ago. Well, then, for heaven's sake, let her in! <laughs> She's in some kind of trouble. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Ah, let these wild dreams and wilder words take wing. Deep in the woods, I hear a shepherd sing. Oh, Ronnie, uh, I looked out the front door and the back, and I couldn't hear the cat anywhere. Well, come in here, and you will. <laughs> now, did you hear that? Oh, Ronnie, that was Mr. Benny playing his violin next door. Oh, well, I should have known. Our cat hasn't sounded like that since she had a strep throat. <laughs> Isn't this awful, Benita? You know, I must rehearse. Well, darling, just go ahead, and if he starts again, don't pay any attention to him. Well, I'll try, I'll try. Yes, I'd better look over the love scene. Let's see. Here it is. Catherine is seated in the royal drawing room. I enter left, walk up stage, take her hand and speak. Darling, I love you. Love you because you are the loveliest woman alive. All my life I have read tales of love and tried to find their secret in the bright eyes about me. 
tried and failed. But when I saw you, the old heaven and the old earth seemed to shrivel away. And I knew what love might mean. For your love, I would face torture. For your love, I would defy death. For your love, I'd greet the gallows. For your love, I'd eat my smell. No, no, no! <laughs> what am I doing, Benita? I've got to have this stopped. Call the police. Call the fire department. Call Petrillo! <laughs> I know, but he'll start again. And with that same old da 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 I tell you, darling, I can't stand it any longer. Johnny, calm down. Something's got to be done. It can't go on. It can't go on. Johnny, there's the phone. I tell you, if this doesn't stop, I... Johnny, the telephone. Oh. Yes, yes, I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, hello, Ronnie. This is Jack, Jack Benny. Oh, it is, eh? <laughs> and Ronnie, I'm trying to practice my violin lesson. So if you and Benita must argue, would you do it on the other side of the house? <laughs> argue? It's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it happens in the best of families. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack, you've got the wrong impression. Benita and I weren't arguing at all. As now, Ronnie, fact, Ronnie, you don't have to stand on ceremony with me. Even Rochester and I have our little tips, but we always patch it up, and I'm sure you will, too. I mean, it's not hard if you'll just make... Hmm. How do you like that? He hung up on me. Imagine him being that mad at Benita. <laughs> oh, well, there's a job to be done, and I'm going to do it. Hello, Luella? <laughs> Have I got a scoop for you? This time it's the Coleman. Uh huh. Like cats and dogs. No, I don't know how it started, but he feels awful. He cried to me over the phone. That's right. You're welcome, Luella. What? No, no, don't mention my name. I don't want anybody else to know I'm a heel. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> been quiet for five minutes now. I'm sure Mr. Benny's finished practicing, so go on rehearsing. Yeah, all right, darling. Uh, let me see. Where was I? Uh, well, there's the door. I'll get it. Yes? Excuse me, Mr. Coleman, but you're a good friend of Mr. Benny, are you not? Well... Would you please do me a favor? A favor? Yes. Mr. Benny owes me seven dollars and fifty cents. Would you mind speaking to him about it? You mean to say that Mr. Benny owes you $7.50 and won't pay you? That's right. Well, I'll take care of it right away. Goodbye. Well, how do you like that, Benita? Benny owes him $7.50 and won't pay it. Hey, give me that phone. Hello, Luella? <laughs> Have I got something for you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen a lot in the papers about a subject of universal interest, automobile driving. Until newer, safer cars are available, we should drive our present overused cars with greater care, thereby protecting ourselves and others. During these jalopy years, help cut down accident rates by encouraging better driving. When newer, safer cars replace the old ones, we'll all be better off because the streets and open highways of tomorrow 
will be free from the high accident rates of today. Thank you very much. in just a moment, but first, here is my good friend, L.A. Speed Riggs. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So remember, L.S.M.F.T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what Mr. Reuben G. Fleming, independent tobacco buyer of Middleburg, North Carolina, says. Naturally, fine tobacco makes a fine smoke. And at auction after auction, I've seen fine mile leaf bought for American. For my own cigarette, I picked Lucky's. I've smoked them for 15 years. Quote, at auction after auction, I've seen fine mild leaf bought for American. Unquote. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, I'm American. Basil Risedale speaking for the makers of Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. 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 Make no mistake, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, in the near future, the United States government is making an atomic bomb test off Bikini Atoll in the Pacific. Among the ships to be used in this test is the famous old aircraft carrier, the Saratoga. And before this ship sails on her last voyage, we have been asked by the Navy to pay her tribute by broadcasting aboard. So next Sunday, our program will come from the hangar deck of the USS Saratoga in San Francisco Bay. I hope you'll all be listening. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.